Nicole and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I care for this Neophenicia falcata orchid. This is also known as the Vanda falcata. This is a care collaboration with Ninja Orchids, Fernando Nascimento, and Lynn Smith. Uh, we all grow in very different environments. Nina's based out in southern Spain, uh, Fernanda's based out in Portugal, and I believe Lynn is out in the UK and she's got a greenhouse. And we all grow very, very differently. I'm based in New York City where I get very hot and humid summers and very cold and dry winters. So I'm going to link everyone's care video down below so you could check it out. And uh, with that said, we can dive right in. So the uh, Neophenicia falcata orchid, I grow completely indoors under LED lights. I give them uh, moderate lights. They're under two strips of, of um, LED lights. Not super strong as this orchid for me doesn't really require too much light like a uh, traditional larger vandaceous orchid. I grow this orchid semi-hydroponically, so I have it set up with uh, LECA in the pot. It's in a self-watering pot with uh, pebbles. And I have the pebbles here to combat the dry top layer. This actually went, started going into bloom yesterday. Today is Friday. I will be uploading this video tomorrow, but I wanted you guys to see the, uh, the blooms. And these guys should be open in the next day or so. This orchid gets uh, pretty moderate temperatures in the winter. So I completely, I have this all the time on grow shelves. It doesn't get any outdoor temps. So my temperatures are between uh, 60 and 80 degrees generally, um, 80 degrees during the day. Sometimes it goes down to 70 right now. Um, the temperatures are quite controlled since this is uh, indoors in an apartment. And then the night lows are 60 degrees. I keep this orchid constantly in an always moist setup. I don't let this get a dry winter rest, but when I first got it, what I did was, when I first repotted it, it had a really nice root system. It was in a mixture of bark and some perlite. So I was very worried that it wouldn't take well to this uh, semi-hydroponic system, and to my surprise, it actually did really, really well. So let me take you a little bit closer so you could see the roots. They've, uh, they've gone down, and to my surprise, these are roots over here that came with this orchid when I transitioned it. They have not died off. And this is a frosted pot, so you can't see it's not 100% transparent, but none of these roots have died off. The new root tips actually grew down, and they, um, they're starting to make their way into the LECA. And what I did when I transitioned this orchid is I made sure that I was spraying the top of the, uh, the roots often. So it, it's constantly moist. It sits in a water reservoir. I don't let this get dry. And so far, I'm seeing good success with it indoors. With regards to my humidity these days, um, as I'm making this video, it is Feb 12th. The temperatures, as I said, are between uh, 60 and 80 degrees generally this time of year. Um, the humidity at this point, it depends on, I have a humidifier running, but I try to keep it around 40% humidity. If I don't have the humidifier on, it can be between like 25 and 30% humidity. And if I really want to um, amp the humidity for the day, then I'll close the door uh, with the humidifier on and it can get up to 70, but that's the exception and not the rule. I spray this orchid um, every morning. I try to spritz my orchids all the time, especially in the winter. In the summer, I don't do that because the humidity here in New York City is quite high. It's not unusual for me to have 80 to 90% humidity in the summer and temperatures of uh, over 90 degrees. Um, so I don't spray my orchids in the summer. I only spritz them when it's dry in the fall um, and in the winter. Um, in terms of the way that I feed this orchid, it gets a very dilute nutrient solution. So I give it in the winter 150 parts per million of MSU fertilizer, 
Once in a while in the uh, grow season, I'll add some kelp into the mix, and that's also included in the uh, total 150 parts per million. I usually do it like in the spring, um, and then when it gets warmer, I amp the feed up, up to 300 parts per million. I flush this orchid very regularly so that it doesn't have buildup of salts. So at minimum once a week, I give it a strong flush of just regular tap water. My tap water is quite good. It has only 30 parts per million in it, so I, it's just fine. I do alter my water since it's sitting in a reservoir of constant nutrients. Um, I do alter that water so that the pH is between uh, 5.5 and 6.5. Generally, I alter it to 6 in general. As it's blooming now, I'm going to cut back on the feed. Maybe I'll just give it um, regular tap water and, and give it just a tiny, tiny, tiny feed of maybe 50 parts per million now that it's opened its blooms since it won't really be needing it right now but the flushing will continue. I'll always constantly flush this orchid and make sure that there's aeration in the pot and that these roots are, are happy. And I think the, the key to making sure that these roots um, stay nice and healthy is the flushing, the feeding lightly, and the pH. I think the pH is very important, especially in semi-hydroponics where the media is does not, uh, it, it does not acidify. So where you may have this traditionally growing in moss, that is more of an acidic environment that will bring your pH down to the appropriate levels. I don't have that with the LECA. So I do alter my pH. I do like the pebbles here because it prevents the roots from desiccating. The uh, LECA, especially in the winter, can get very dry. And when those uh, pieces of LECA are dry, when a new root tip hits, it can desiccate. So that's the purpose of the, um, of the pebbles here. I'm, um, I'm, I'm very pleased with this. I found that the roots are growing down very nicely. I was very worried with this, especially transitioning it over from bark, but it seems to be very happy. It started pushing out this flower spike about three weeks ago, and to my surprise, it bloomed already. Um, this is a, I got it when it was in bloom, and this is a rebloom, um, and this is my first rebloom of this orchid. As I mentioned, this grows under LED lights. It has, you could see some of the anthocyanin, uh, the purpley, um, color come in so i think it's getting certainly it's getting adequate light it doesn't need uh, too much light so this one it could probably grow on a windowsill but i keep it on a moderate light shelf and in the winter i run those lights for 14 hours per day rather i run those lights for 12 hours per day and then in the summer i increase that to 14 hours per day and sometimes even 15 hours per day, depending on the season. Um, so I like to sort of match it up with how the sun is um, where I'm at. Not precisely in the, um, in the winter, we may only get a nine hour day, but I make sure that they're getting at least a 12 hour day. And in summer, we increase that to 14 and 15 hours. I find this orchid pretty easy to grow. It's not very finicky. It's doing very well for me in the LECA. So I really, really enjoy this orchid, so much so that I'm buying other neo Phoenicia hybrids. I find that it's a very easy grower for me, and I think, as I've said, the success is to do with the feeding, the flushing, altering the pH, and constantly monitoring this orchid. It's getting a decent amount of light under my grow shelves, but if you're having trouble with this, I suggest that you check out the other videos that I have linked down below. So Fernanda, Nina, and Lynn have very different conditions that I do, than I do, and they can offer some insight to the way that they're growing it. So Nina grows semi-hydroponically, Lynn grows these in moss, and then Fernanda, she grows them in her garden. So I think 
if um, you grow outdoors or if you have a different climate, you'll get some good insights into how others care for these. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid content. Take care, everyone. Bye.